What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. Sony is supposedly working on the Vita 2 right now as we speak, if rumors are to be believed. And this rumor comes to us by a YouTube channel called Moore's Law is Dead, who is a hardware leaker who has a history of being right at least part of the time. But with all rumors, take it with a grain of salt. And when I first heard this, I was like, no, there's no need for a Vita 2. PlayStation 5 is perfectly fine. We don't need yet another portable system from Sony to forget about, just like they have previous times, multiple times in the past. But this is a little bit different, and the reason for that is this supposed Vita 2 is actually a portable PS4 slash PS5. <laughs> Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for my full article breaking down all the information from Moore's Law is Dead, along with links, references, and more thoughts of mine. But for this video, we're going to dive into this supposed Vita 2 link and my thoughts about it. First off, when I first heard about this, my initial reaction was, ugh, why? Why is Sony trying to do something like this? The PlayStation 5 is perfectly sufficient for what they're doing right now, and they're beating Xbox when it comes to home consoles, even though Microsoft is moving more towards PC and aren't really fighting Sony right now. Anyways, they're typically the one people think about as far as the powerhouse home console that most people want to go to for high quality, high graphical fidelity, great game experiences. Sony is it with the PlayStation 5. The idea of a PS Vita kind of scared me because it made me worry that Sony would divert their attention away from the PlayStation 5 and start making more games for a different console and then split their resources and end up in a situation like they were in previously with the PS Vita and PlayStation 3 or Nintendo with the DS and 3DS with the Wii and the Wii U. There wasn't enough manpower behind them, a lot of the resources were getting split, and the experiences were not as high as they could have been because of that. And that was my biggest concern going into this rumor. Yes, in theory, great, a PS Vita 2, everyone's been talking about it, but in reality, it doesn't make much business sense. Until you dive a little bit deeper and find out about what's going on under the hood with this thing and why it makes a lot of sense. Moore's Law is Dead reports that Sony is in the early stages of developing a non-streaming PlayStation handheld capable of natively playing games. This device, currently being referred to as the PlayStation Vita 2, is said to be powered by a custom AMD APU and is currently in the high-level design phase. Remember though, this is just a rumor, it has not been greenlit for launch, and there's a lot of work between now and then for it to be done. There's at least two years from the moment this video gets published between now and when this thing even comes to fruition, assuming the best of circumstances. According to the leaks, the device features 18 compute units, or CUs, to maintain native backward compatibility with all PS4 digital titles. PS5 games could also be supported through a pro-like patch. After some development and testing, maybe we're getting a little ahead of ourselves because, yes, it's two years in the future and technology progresses fast, but a portable PlayStation 5 in two years? I don't know about that. Maybe lower resolution, but we'll have to see. The handheld GPU might run at the 1.8 GHz or slower processor with games running at a much lower resolution due to the variable clock speeds of the PS5. But remember, this is all speculative at this point and we're going by rumors from Moore's Law is Dead and the development of a deal behind the scenes with Sony and AMD who have already supposedly inked deals to make a processor specific for this console. There's speculation that the Vita 2 could be part of the PlayStation 6 family of devices as well, aimed at providing a portable gaming experience for the Japanese market specifically, but also, obviously, the US and rest of the world would be interested in this. And this all speaks to the greater issue that has been coming up a lot lately, which is how Microsoft especially has been moving more towards the digital landscape and getting away from physical games. You're looking at a Vita 2 
It wouldn't use cartridges, most likely, and it wouldn't use discs or what they've used before on the PSP. This is something that most likely would be an all-digital system that would use specific games from your PS account, or if you participate in the PS Plus account system and you pay for that monthly service where you could stream games or download games digitally, most likely this would be based off of that, but at least the technology being present would make it possible to potentially play PS5 level games, albeit a bit downgraded, on a portable system that doesn't have to be the PS portal, where you can have it offline, you can take it anywhere, and you don't need to connect to a Wi-Fi internet and have a blazing fast speed just for the game to work properly. There's a lot of people on both sides of this, as usual. Some expressing excitement of the prospect of a new Sony handheld, reminiscing about the original Vita's promise, while others are skeptical, questioning the credibility of the source and the viability of a new handheld in the market dominated by the likes of the Nintendo Switch and Valve's Steam Deck, alongside plenty of other competitors entering the ring right now. Joining the mobile game arms race is a challenging fight, to say the least. Many people also share concerns about how Sony doesn't seem to commit to their secondary hardware. Look at the PSVR 2, for example. I mean, that came out and Sony was all about it for like two months and they were talking about how this is the next big thing in VR and then it just kind of fell by the wayside. They didn't even have it available in stores initially. And at this point, people are already moving on to other devices because there aren't enough games on the PSVR 2 to justify it. The price is outrageous for what you get for it. And plus you also have to have a PlayStation 5 in addition to it. So many people that want VR games just go through the MetaQuest route or one of the slew of other competitors out there. And Sony just seems to let the PSVR 2 slip by the wayside. And people are concerned that the same damn thing is gonna happen just like they did with the Vita, the PSP, where they gave it the old college try and then we're like, eh, yeah, we're not really making money here. Let's go back to our bread and butter, the console. So there are plenty of concerns when it comes to Sony re-entering the mobile platform console race where, yes, the portal is kind of dipping their toes into that, but this would be a full-on portable experience where you don't have to have an internet connection for the games to work properly. And while Sony has obviously not confirmed any of the details regarding this handheld gaming device, the rumors are flying around right now and people are starting to get a hint of excitement. Now who knows what's going to happen when it comes to technology a month from now, never mind two plus years from now, but still it's interesting to note that yes, according to these leaks, Sony is already in talks with AMD trying to figure out what's next when it comes to their platforms. Whether or not the Vita 2 comes to fruition, the very discussion reflects a continued interest in the portable gaming solutions that blend high quality gaming experience with the convenience of mobility that's not a cell phone and a lot of people were saying that gaming and the game industry in general was all going to cell phones and all these console makers would be out of business and in, in five years like this is a decade ago when mobile games were starting to get their big rise with smartphone technology and Nintendo proved them all wrong when it came to not just the DS and 3DS but when it came to the Switch, and they made this huge leap forward in their technology of what they were planning on doing, and merging their departments and portable and home consoles into one, where they all work on the same thing together, and the device itself does both as well. So Nintendo has blazed a path and shown that, yes, even in the era of smartphones and people playing a lot more mobile gaming everywhere, that you can still have a successful device dedicated to gaming and make it in the landscape of the video game industry today. As far as what Sony is doing in the future, who knows, but I wanted to bring this to you guys because I felt like it was very interesting to at least talk about. Let me know what you think about the Sony PlayStation Vita 2 in the comments and if it's something you might be interested in. Like I said at the outset of this video, when I first heard about it, I was not a big fan. I'm like, we don't need to split up the gaming departments. Sony's doing just fine. But when I found out more about this and how it's going to be running specifically PS4 and PS5 games potentially, that means they don't have to split anything up and it would just be a mobile, maybe a less versatile version of the home console, a, a less quality, a lower grade, but it still plays the game. That's something that a lot of people could get excited about. And I could see... A, a need and a niche for that 
in the market. Anyways, I'm going to leave the video there. If you want more information, check out SmashJT.com for the full article. I will link it in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, you stay smashing. Smash Smash Smash